I'm realizing it's trending towards straddling um, two things, investigating the role that robots and technology play on people, but in two ways. The two approaches are an engineering approach that creates utilitarian solutions, but then a research-based approach that's more exploring aesthetics through experimenting with form and motion. My current work is at X, and it, I think it's stemming from a passion to do hands-on problem solving. And just shout out to Kendra Byrne, who did a keynote this morning, who's also from X. Um, X's mission is to solve really challenging problems that are pervasive throughout the world um, with new radical technologies. And some of the public projects are Project Loon, which is uh, balloons to deliver internet, Project Wing, which is self-flying vehicles, and the self-driving car. But my team is called the Rapid Evaluation Team, which is prototyping new X projects, which means building early stage prototypes and sourcing new weird technology that could scale. So I build electronics prototypes. I hack off the shelf parts to explore things in all different domains. Um, I do sort of like RC car hacking, building automated gliders, and thinking about like food security by doing really small prototypes to build automated gardens. But I got here in a really windy path. And the thing that one thing that ties things together is a love for animals and nature. And I've grown up with pets like snakes and turtles. And then I did snake research for a while um, in college. But that, I think, has led me to really love robots that are inspired by animal form. And this is Sneal, which is a snake robot, a biomimetic snake robot, which means that the form is inspired by biology. And the inspiration for Sneal, I think, originates from a fascination that I have with exploring form in robots. And so far, I've built about nine snake robots. And they all move and interact differently. And people react very differently to each of them as well, which is an important part of the exploration. So I studied a real snake as an uh, inspiration. And so the spine of my snake, all the snake robots, loosely mimic that. And I've built the mechanical fabrication so everything snaps together like Legos. And I looked at algorithms for real snakes to modify mine for swimming. And I first start with, by modeling something in software. And then I generated, a few years ago, a software library to model the motion in code through the motors, which I've tweaked over time. And each of the snake robots really acts differently. And so it's the most exciting part is to snap it together and turn it on for the first time and feel it like jolt to life. So they, some live in galleries. Some have swum in Central Park, Newtown Creek with sensors to sense the water. Um, San Francisco, I got in trouble in Central Park a few years ago, which was the first time I put it in the water. But um, as well as exploring form, for me, it's also turned into this open source platform um, as I've shared my work and documented to engage a wider community. A lot of my work throughout the years has really been project-based and social. And so I've really felt and learned the power that accessible tools could provide to people to build really powerful projects. So I'm trying to move a little bit away from just snakes and to build some six-legged robots and rolling robots and other types of animal explorations. And the work I'm doing now is out of Babe Lab, which is an art collective in Oakland. But I've also designed art installations, um, mostly with Floating Point, which is an art collective I started in in 2012 with um, a group of grad school students, some, are, some of whom are here today. Our mission was to use technology as a medium for expression. And the last um, installation I did was called Tides of Change, which is in San Francisco. And we built this out of Autodesk's Pier 9. And it's a two-story memorial installation for James R. Herman, who's a, labor rights act a former labor rights activist. And the installation aims to educate and inspire people as they arrive on a ship to San Francisco for the first time in a playful and engaging way. Another series of installations I did with Floating Point is called Landscapes. And this allows visitors to collaboratively sculpt form as they come into the gallery. So as people pass by the installation, their shape becomes encoded in the projection. And then over the course of the installations, we've saved snapshots as 3D files, which we then later print into 3D sculptural objects. This completes the circle of physical gesture into virtual data and then back into physical form. So I'm finding that an integrating element of my work is really 
investigating technology's role on people, but in serious and playful ways. And I continue to straddle this tension between exploring aesthetics and exploring the functional ways that technology might be able to improve people's lives. Thank you. Thank you.